Hey guys, Mono here, and today I'll be doing something completely different, because I won't be featuring gameplay or a guide or anything. This is my Helladus map tier list, and the reason for that is because I very often get asked, what are my favorite maps in the game? Uh, when I'm streaming, you know, people want to know what are my favorite maps and what are my least favorite maps. So I figured might as well do a video on it. So here it is. This is the tier list. And I just screenshotted all the loading screens down there so you guys can easily identify each of the maps. And let's just go over them and I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like about each of them. So let's start with Foy, which is a solid B tier, I think, like right there in the middle of the pack. It's a fun map. I really enjoy tanking on Foy. Is like as a tanking map, it is spectacular. Um However, as infantry, some of the points are really not very good. Like West Bend, for example, on the left side, if you get that as the middle point, that favors the Germans a lot. So it makes fighting over it as allies really hard because you can't really flank it. There's, there's no way to get around and maybe get a garrison north of it or an LP or something because it is so far up the north side that it is just at the limit when the Germans do cap that sector you can't as allies build behind it right because it's it's at the top of the second uh red zone so yeah that is a problem but there are some really really awesome points like foy town itself and southern approach i really enjoy fighting over those sectors uh i think yeah like the layout of the map i really like the two main roads with some buildings and stuff like that that area i think that middle area is the best part of the map and the most enjoyable one. I understand that like, some people really don't like Foy because there's a lot of open fields and you need to move around, you need to know how to move around them. So you need to use those little terrain differences to be able to hide yourself and you know go prone along those snow banks and just like prone your way halfway across the map, which you can absolutely do, but a lot of people don't know that or don't take the time to do that, so they get frustrated with it. But yeah, I really enjoy it. I think it's good, like it's not the best map. I think it's good, but it can be bad. So that's why it's a, it's a B tier. Um, next up, next up, Samri Dumont. And yeah, this is an easy S tier, I think. Samri Dumont is, out of the three new maps that we got with update 10, I think it's the best one out of Stalingrad, Kursk and SMDM. SMDM is the best. I love and this is something that like will you will see in my S tier and A tier probably maps. I love the combination of open fields and houses and groups of houses and stuff like that. And SMDM is all about that. You have the town area on the bottom right side, which is awesome. It is it is really, really fun to fight over. I think it's gonna suffer some changes. Like they are gonna open up some more paths and stuff like that. So it's not as hard as it is right now to get into that area and be able to fight over it so um yeah that, that i think will change but apart from that like the entire map itself it is very it's a very complicated map which is why i haven't done a map breakdown video yet because it's really samey in a way like there's always like groups of houses and fields and wheat fields that you can hide in and hedgerows and trenches and stuff like that all over the place but that creates really awesome fighting areas right when you're engaged in a firefight it's it's there's always cover available you can move around and i think it's just a lot of fun to play it's it's one of the best maps currently for sure all right hill 400 yeah i'm gonna put this at c tier because forest maps like hurtgen and hill 400 can be really frustrating because you need to understand how to move around them so sometimes you need to be really fast to be able to get into position and, you know, build a garrison or whatever to be able to attack. But sometimes you have to be super slow and just move, you know, go prone and just hide in the forest next to a tree, sniping the people that are running around. Because if you run through the forest, you are immediately visible to everyone. Like it is so easy to see someone running through the forest. However, if you lay still, if you're crouching, if you're, you know, not moving, it is almost impossible to spot you. So you need to learn how to play that. And that play style is not always a lot of fun. 
So, but apart from that, like Hill 400, I think is very samey. The hill area itself, the forest area itself, there's a lot of it, unlike something like Hurtgen, where the forest area is a bit more confined, I think. And so it doesn't drag on as much. But in Hill 400, if you have to fight, let's say, over a hill and then train wreck and then move north and stuff like that, that is a lot of forest to fight over and it can get kind of boring. The town area, I think it's pretty cool. And um, a lot of, yeah, it's actually, yeah, it's like, I wouldn't rank it as one of the best town areas, like something as good as Foy is, for example. But I think it's decent. But overall, like, if this is on the rotation, like, I'm not looking forward to playing this, right? I, I will play it, like, fine, yeah. But I'm not looking forward to it necessarily. And one map that I'm definitely not looking forward to is Purple Heart Lane, which is... I think, like, this is, I think, on a tier of, you know what, like, it, it is on a tier of its own, so let's, let's do the, the PHL tier here for Purple Heart Lane, because this is the worst map in the game, I think, by far, like, it's the only map that I, that I specifically avoid playing, like, if this comes up in the rotation, if I'm in a server and this comes up, I switch servers, like, that's how much I dislike Purple Heart Lane. And that's funny because it actually was one of my favorite maps when I started playing Hell and Deuce. And the reason for that is because it is so atmospheric. Like, it is perfect in that sense. The rain, it, everything's wet, it's depressive, it's cloudy, it's... It's, yeah, like, the immersion is perfect on Purple Heart Lane. But that also is the reason why I don't like it. Because it is such a grindy map. It is such a, like, it's a map where you go and crawl through like 200 meters of this flooded trench line and you get bombarded by the RD or by an enemy tank or anything. And it is just very frustrating to play. The problem I think that Purple Heart Lane has is that there's not a lot of approaches that you can take to attack each of the sectors. There's only a couple, like maybe a handful, two or three at the most actual areas that you can move like hedgerows or trenches or stuff that you can use as cover to attack a point. So when you shut those areas down, when you shut down those avenues of attack onto a point by using RD, for example, because there's literally no cover anywhere almost, uh, so you can really shut those down with RD or with a tank or something like that, it becomes impossible to move around the map and it is just so frustrating. It is, fr it is frustrating to drown randomly when trying to cross a river. The tr you know, driving a tank, for example, can be also a drag. So overall, like, it's a good map, like, in the sense that it accomplishes what it sets out to do, which is creating this absolutely awful place to fight over. But, you know, that doesn't translate into fun gameplay. It translates into this miserable experience that you have while playing Purple Heart Lane, which is the entire point, but it's just not fun. So yeah, I think Purple Heart Lane out of all the maps is the one more desperately in need of a redesign. Purple, uh, Hurricane Forest. Hurricane Forest is an A tier for me. Uh, it's a really solid map, one which I've had really interesting matches in. Like I tend to have these matches that go on forever with the middle point, like fighting over the middle point for the entire duration, the hour and a half. So, you know, that's obviously good, but it also creates these very stressful moments. But yeah, it's it, but it's really good. Like the, the, the middle part of the map with the river, it forces you to play very differently because if you want to flank from the other side of the river, you don't really have much space. If you're playing Germans, if you're playing allies, then you do have a lot more space on the German side that you can go and press place uh, red zone garrisons and stuff like that. So yeah, overall, I think it's a very uh, cool map, very fun to play. The forest sides of it, like it's like Hill 400, kind of, but it's also a bit more open. So you can move around a bit more freely and there's roads and stuff like that. It's a bit more open. So yeah, overall, like it's a map I really enjoy playing and yeah, like I don't know what else to say about it. Kursk, I'm going to put in tier B because I think as a tank map, it's 
really good, but it does have some major problems. So first of all, let's talk about it. The problem that you can camp the Russian spawn from windmills if you're German. So once you get into that position as a German tank, like you never want to leave there because you can snipe the HQ. You can snipe the tanks as they spawn, which obviously is a problem. The devs are aware and they are going to fix that. But, you know, like currently it creates this big problem. However, disregarding that problem, it is one of those maps that really requires combined uh, combined effort from both the tanks and the infantry to be able to push because there's so much open field that gets negated in a way by the trench line system because using the trenches, you can basically get around the entire map inside a trench. And using that in a match is really effective. But that means you know, placing garrisons on red zone areas and stuff like that, that people don't really do. And if you want to push into one of the tougher points, then you do need tanks to support you, right? And like, yeah, it's a good map. I enjoy playing it, definitely. I think it does have that issue. If it weren't for the camping issue, I would probably bump this to a tier A, maybe. Uh, I think I need some more time with it, but yeah, overall, like it's a solid map. I enjoy playing it. I don't mind it. Carantan, easy, easy S tier because Carantan, I think it's one of those perfect maps. It is so good. It used to have performance problems, like really awful performance problems when it came out, just like Stalingrad. But right now, I think it runs fine, and it is like I absolutely love the town area in Carantan. To the point that I've actually sabotaged my own team. One time we were steamrolling. I built this attack garrison on, I think it was Paper Mill. Yeah, we're, I built this attack garrison and I, I, I went like, you know, the entire team is going to spawn there and this map is going to be over in like half an hour and it's Carantan. I actually want to play this. So I actually destroyed that garrison and didn't put it back because I wanted the map to last longer. That's how much I enjoy playing Carantan. And it actually ended up being a really awesome round, so I did good. Um, yeah, Carantan, like that town area with the church, with the factory, and that bridge going north. Speaking of, that north area is very interesting because as it, it has a lot of asymmetry. Like from the Allied side, you can really get on the north side very easily. But as a German, you have to go across either the, the actual bridge or the bridge made out of ships. So... Yeah, it creates this very different scenario, uh, completely different from any other map, I think, in the game. It's it's so good. It's so good. That Mont Hale area south where it, everything's open and you can see for miles combined with like train station with the, you know, long lines of sight from the train tracks themselves, but also a lot of cover and buildings and stuff. It's so perfect. It's such a good map. I really enjoy Carantan. Like, I wish there was, like, a team deathmatch mode. We were talking about this with Squid the other day. I wish there was a team deathmatch mode specifically for Carantan because that's how good that map is. All right. Uh, Omaha Beach, A tier. Definitely A tier. It's a really good map. Like, how iconic is Omaha in a World War II game, right? And I think Hella Deuce does it really, like, it does it justice. It's really good. Storming the beach is a lot of fun. The rest of the map is also a lot of fun. There is a town area. There is open field. So mono, mono good. Um, and there's also those points like artillery battery or rear battery that as a German, you can, if you get like a squad, you split it in two, you get supply truck rolling in, engineers rotating and building stuff like bunkers and barricades and trench lines and putting down mines and stuff like that. You can really, really convert, uh, like transform those areas into absolute fortresses, which are almost impossible to take. But that's the fun in it, right? It's almost impossible. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Omaha Beach, like how can you not like Omaha? It's really good. Um, Stalingrad. So Stalingrad for me, when I first started playing Stalingrad in Update 10, was a C tier. But I think right now it's a B tier for me. And it might even get to an A tier soon. Because offensive mode in Stalingrad is perfect. Like, 
I, I recently did a video on this. Uh, it is the perfect mode for Stalingrad. It's how you want to play that map because warfare, like in warfare mode, it's it doesn't have the same intensity, I think, as when you're playing offensive, when one team is really hunkered down in a single point. Like, yeah, it, it doesn't convey the same level of Stalingradness, if you will. And they might change the fact that you can't build garrisons and OPs inside buildings. So that might change. And if that changes, Stalingrad is either going to go A tier or it's going to go C tier because that might make uh, the map impossible to play and impossible to, ca to cap the areas where there's big buildings. If you can build a garrison inside there in the basement or something, it can maybe it turns out to be like this really frustrating map. I don't know, but I think it would be better because those buildings really need to see more fighting in them. They need to be like, I'm going to get into the building and there's going to be five different floors that I'm going to have to clear with my MP40 or my PPSH or whatever that that currently doesn't happen in the game. So I'd like to see that happen. But it's one of those maps that I think a lot of people don't know how to play because it's a new map. And compared to something like SMDM, which is, you know, similar to other maps, Stalingrad, like it's very different. It's very different. That middle part with the train wreck uh, with the sorry the train tracks and everything there's only a handful of places where you can actually go across and not be exposed to absolutely everyone so until people actually learn that and start playing it correctly uh yeah i think some people really don't like it but i'm starting to enjoy it more and more the more i play it so definitely b tier maybe even an a tier sme Absolutely easy S tier. SME is maybe the best map in the game. It's perfectly balanced. Like it's very symmet symmetrical in a way, but it's also not because, for example, checkpoint on the south side, it's very different from the allies. Like the approach from the allies is very different from the German approach, which has a lot more cover on some sides, but it also has a big ass open field on the bottom, uh, like off the map for the Germans. So it's very interesting, dude. Hospice plays very differently from like fighting over the church area. That town strip itself is perfect. I love fighting over that area, but also the open fields, like getting to something like artillery battery or Western approach or stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. Like it's, it's a perfect map. I think it's one of the best maps in the game, if not the best map in the game. Like between those three, I, I really wouldn't know how which one to pick. All right, last one, Utah Beach. Utah Beach used to be one of my favorite maps in the game, and this would actually go on the S tier, but I'm going to bump it down to B tier. And the reason for that is because of the changes that have been made to barbed wire, which make it makes it almost impossible to be able to fight over points like WN7 and WN4. Like if you get the top or the bottom middle points to fight over, it is the worst map. Because if you have a team that's halfway decent, that caps those that, that sector and then builds some defenses, like if you use your engineer's barbed wire to close up the two or three spots that you can actually go through the barbed wire because there's a hole in them, if you close those off, it is game over. Like, it is game over. It is almost impossible to recover and attack a position like that because especially like WN7, the south side, from the north, it's complete open fields. From the right side, you can't really flank as a, as a German because you can't really, there's no way you can hide a garrison because it's all open. So yeah, it's, it's just such a drag. If you get Chapel, like if you get chapel as middle point it is perfect it it is one of the most enjoyable and fun maps to play in the entire game but if you get wn4 or you get wn7 it is almost uh like i consider switching servers right away because i really don't enjoy fighting over those areas with the changes to barbed wire so hopefully they either make the environmental barbed wire destructible which would be very cool or they make it so you can go across barbed wire, but take damage and take too long to go across or something. 
or they just remove the environmental barbed wire significantly, like remove several chunks of it and make it so you can't actually close those areas off as easily. Yeah, so yeah, it's a shame about YouTube Beach really because that used to be one of the best maps in the game, but since that changed, it's just awful to fight over if you get those points. So that's gonna be my list. Uh, I think most of the maps in the game are actually good. Like everything, like B tier is not bad. Like, you know, B tier is not bad. Hill 400, it's not the best map, but it's also not bad. And Purple Heart Lane is, is the actual bad map in the game, I think. Like that's, yeah. For me, Purple Heart Lane, it's Alta 4, Switch servers, whatever. Like I really don't enjoy playing it. And actually... I was playing Purple Heart Lane not too long ago because the next map was like Samri and then Carentan and like it was a really good rotation after Purple Heart Lane and we didn't finish Purple Heart Lane. Like we all, my entire squad quit the game because we got so frustrated and so freaking bored playing Purple Heart Lane. So, all right, let me know what you think down in the comment section. If you agree with this, if you don't like, yeah, it's my list, so I don't really care, but I'd like to know which are the favorite maps by the community and whatnot. So yeah, let me know down in the comment sections. And as always, thank you for watching and I hope I will catch you in the next one.